Hey guys, you're watching the Best Practices Show where we take a look at the best business practices from the best dental practices all over the country. And today we're going to talk to one of the newest, hottest educators in the country on the whole lip factor in oral facial treatment. So don't miss this. Do me a favor, grab a pen and hit the share button. We'll see you in a second. Hey guys, welcome back to the Best Practice Show. Thank you so much for watching. Crazy, crazy, crazy grateful. Um, just all the feedback and uh, we've got some amazing people lined up here in the future and today is no exception. You're going to love this. Dr. Kyle Stanley. Took me a while to get him, but I got him. I finally got him. Got him on the show, so it's going to be fun. Now, a couple show notes. If you're uh, um, where you're shooting this live on Facebook, so do me a favor. If, um, if you have a question during the live feed, please add it to the feed and I will give it straight to Kyle and we'll get the answer straight from the top. And then also, if you're watching this later on and you have a question, I'm sure somebody else has the questions. Go afraid. Don't be afraid. Go ahead and ask it. And uh, we'll make sure that we give you the right answer, get you the right answer, because I want you to get the most out of this while you're watching these. So uh, in the dentist I have today, one of the hottest young speakers in the United States. It took me a while. I kept uh, trying to track him down. Finally got him. And uh, Dr. Kyle Stanley, and he's involved in a lot of different stuff. Now, I know who you are, and I'll say this. You have been uh, voted one of the top young 10 speakers in all of dentistry, along with our good friend, Dr. Josh Austin, just recently, right? That's right. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah. And you, you've got like 40 dates a year. Like, I, that's way more than me. I don't know how you're doing it, man. And you're married, and you've got a, you got a child, too. So we're going to talk about your whole journey here. And you've yeah. had some incredible mentors. Like, you started early with some of the best with uh, Pascal Magne. But um, take us through your journey, because while I know your journey, somebody watching this may not. Can you tell us who you are, Kyle, and uh, a little bit about your journey and where you're at? Sure. Yeah. First, so thanks for having me. It's uh, it's an honor to be here and be among the other you know people that you've had on this. This is I'm humbled to be here. So thank you. Um, so I am from Southern California, and I went to USC. And while I was at USC, I was lucky enough to study under a guy named Pascal Magne, who many people know. You know, the father of biomimetic dentistry, minimally invasive dentistry, veneers. He's just a fantastic guy. And while I was there, I was part of something called the Aesthetic Selective, where Pascal really works closely with a small group of people. And we became friends. He really became my mentor, me and my, my partner, Matthew Najad. We really grasped on to him. And then I told Pascal, I said, you know, I really want to learn implants. And he was like, OK, you want to learn implants? All right, you have to learn Portuguese and you have to move to Brazil. And, you know, he has a French accent. So I was kind of like, wait, did I understand what you said correctly? So. Yeah, so I, I moved to Brazil. I did my implant residency and implant specialty. Then I came back. I was teaching at USC with Pascal, and we started talking about Sasha Jovanovic. And uh, he said, "Do you know Sasha?" And I said, "Well, I've read all of his, I've read all of his papers. I've seen him lecture. You know, he's a father of bone regeneration." And he said, "Well, let me let me have you meet Sasha." So he not only did he get me into my residency, he then hooked me up with my second mentor, Sasha Jovanovic. And I've been with Sasha now for over five years. Um, I'm, we teach together, we practice together a little bit as well. And then in the last year, um, my newest mentor is Christian Coachman. Mm -hmm. And I've been really lucky that Christian has taken me under his wing and believed in me and really uh, promoted some of the stuff that I'm doing. So I'm just a product of three amazing guys that I've been lucky enough to uh, study under. Yeah, and if you're a young dentist watching that, listen to what Kyle says. I mean, this is key to your future is just being in the right circles. I call it the neighborhood. Make sure you're hanging out in the right neighborhood with people because it can add so much to your life uh, and so many great things. Now, there's so many things I want to talk to you about and ask you about, one of them being the lip factor, which we're going to get into in a second. But you're now also going to be on the main stage at the Seattle Study Club Symposium next year, which yeah. I'm so happy for you, buddy. That is like, yeah. that's the bomb. And uh, Yeah, you know, I, I snuck my way into that, and the, the here's the 
the way that I did it. So I was set to do it for this year, for 2017. But then I had a kid, and he was born like 10 days before. Oh, wow. So then uh, Dr. Cohen was nice enough to say, oh, well, you can come the next year then. Little did I know that the next year was the 25th anniversary that has like all the top speakers, and then me somehow snuck my way in there. Yeah, and if you're watching this again, if you haven't been, you got to go. It's amazing. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's absolutely awesome. amazing. Yeah, so take us in this. You know, one of the things that Coachman noticed about you was this whole lip factor thing. So can you describe that, you know, what the lip factor is in oral facial treatment and kind of what you've been teaching and what you've seen? Because I don't know that there's anybody out there that even teaches this. Is it true? Yeah, I, mean, uh, I, I haven't found anybody in dentistry as well. Okay. Um, so... What the lip factor is, is basically appreciating the lip and knowing what we can do with it. That's like the easy way of saying it. Um, what that incorporates is bringing in plastic surgery aspects, um, full oral facial treatment into our treatment planning. So, for example, a patient comes into your practice. They're in their 60s, 70s, let's say an older lady. And she says, you know, I really want to smile. And when I smile, I want to show more teeth. Or when I talk, I want, I want to show more teeth. I want to look more friendly. And usually what us as dentists would do is we'd take wherever her lip is, we'd add two millimeters to it, and that's where we'd place her incisal edge. Well, I'm saying this is now incorrect. What all everybody has said is now that's the old way of doing it. Mm -hmm. What we're doing it now with our group is we're taking the lip, putting it in the correct position, and then placing the teeth based on cephalometric tracings, ideal facial analysis. Right. So we're adjusting the lip back to the youthful position before we start with the teeth. Right. Now we're going to get into the how here in a little bit because I'm very curious about this because I don't know anything about plastic surgery and you, yep. know, you can take us on that journey. But I want to talk about the why because w one thing I really appreciate, especially with Christian and a lot of the European dentists, is the minimally invasive approach. I mean, you could make an argument that this is a great way to do less dentistry. Um, and um, it, would you agree on that as far yeah. as this whole entire approach? Yeah, for sure. And you know, you and I were talking before. What can happen sometimes is a patient come to us, like I just said, let's say that 70-year-old lady, right. she wants to show more teeth. What 99% of dentists are doing is saying, okay, let's prep 10 veneers, lengthen everything, and now you show more teeth. But now her filtrum is still so long. Her maxilla got even longer because we lengthened the teeth, and then her full facial structure doesn't look good. She still looks old. So now what we can do in some of these cases is move the lip, do a simple plastic surgery, oral surgery procedure, and sometimes we just have to bleach or do composite bonding or simple Invisalign. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's way less invasive. Yeah. How was this born? Where, where did this come out of? Like, how did you, and then also let's get into how you do it because in the state of California, you cannot do plastic surgery in your office. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. So first question, how did I find out about this? Yeah. That's an interesting one. Okay. So during dental school, I was modeling to help pay for dental school. Okay. So I would, uh, you know, in the morning I would be, have a denture patient. Let's say that older lady. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we're figuring out where we're going to put her incisal edge. And I'm looking at her and she's got this long upper filtrum and every, all my prosthodontic faculty is telling me, take the lip, add two millimeters to it. Mm -hmm. Then in the afternoon, I'm going to a modeling casting. And I'm seeing all these young, beautiful women and looking at their mouths, being a dental student. So I'm seeing, okay, they have a short upper filtrum, inverted upper lip. They show a lot of tooth display at rest. I want to give my older patients that mouth because that's the mouth that they want. They don't want an old mouth. They want a younger mouth. So I started looking at it. And then what I figured out is that it's not really the teeth that are the problem most of the time. Although, you know, with abrasion and attrition, it is. But the lip is the problem. Mm -hmm. And us as dentists have just been taught to accept where the lip is and just do teeth and gums. You know, you guys do teeth and gums, and that's it. So I started looking into this, reading articles, studying plastic surgery, studying facial analysis. And then I realized that there's these procedures out there that we're just not using as dentists. And mm -hmm. we don't have to do them, like you said. You know, in, in California, I can't do this. So I work really closely with a top, top, top plastic surgeon named Ben Talle. And Ben is like the top guy for lip lifts. And this is one of the procedures that we use. So now we have oral surgeons that are doing it. We have plastic surgeons. You know, in other countries, some of my friends from Spain 
um, my friend Eduardo de la Torre, he can actually do this in his practice in Spain legally. So, you know, in our classes that me and Ben teach, we're teaching general dentists, oral surgeons, plastic surgeons, anyone that's doing surgery on the face. Yeah. Boy, you could create a whole nother segment to the argument, how the teeth fit into the face. I mean, you, yeah. there's like, there's like a whole nother channel that we can go down here too. Um, now I, how do you do this? Well, let's go, let's start with this. Okay. With DSD, mm -hmm. you have the ability to do it before you do it. Like you could actually yeah. treatment plan. Can you describe, cause some people might not know what DSD is yep. and you can have this all done before you even start the procedure, right? Correct. Yeah. So with Digital Smile Design, DSD, invented by Christian Coachman, um, the whole idea is to predictably have, uh, let me say that a better way, facial, oral facial treatment that's predictable. So we're placing the teeth not only where they are in the mouth, we're mm -hmm. placing them based on the lips, we're placing them on the cheeks, on the eyes, the midline, the chin, the nose, the filtrum, everything taking the whole aspect of the face um, into our dental realm, we can make, do 3D wax ups. We can try this in the patient's mouth so that everybody knows what we're getting into before we start treatment. So it's not how the old way of cosmetic aesthetic dentistry was, which is prep the teeth, send it to the lab. The lab does whatever they want, put it in the mouth and say, what do you think? Right. You know, now the patient knows, the dentist knows, the technician knows, all before we get started, what's going to happen? And now what I've been doing is incorporating the plastic surgery into it as well. So that's another team member that gets added. That's awesome. And the patient could watch this and say, no, go a little bit shorter. No, go exactly. like, yeah. way before we do anything yeah. to get started. Yeah. So like what Christian says, is, you know, you can be the co-pilot to your smile. You can, uh -huh. you know, and our, our patients have their say in it, what they want. Right. Right. That is fantastic. Now, with the plastic surgeon, now, do you treatment plan these cases together? Do you have the conversation? Because the way I, you know, you and I have talked, it can go both ways. It can come through the plastic surgery or, or, or can be through your office Correct. Um, that you work together on the patient with the patient. Yeah. Yeah. So my preferred way is that we put the lip in the correct position and then we do the teeth. Right. And really the best way of doing that is how we like to do it is putting in the the patient in provisionals. Okay. So I, I will send it to Dr. Talle and say, this is where I think we're going to end based okay. on her face, based on her smile. Now he will then move to the lip with, with my involvement, with his involvement, his expertise to where we think it's going to be. Then we can finalize the case. But like I told you before, sometimes they're going directly to Dr. Talle, not thinking about their teeth and getting whatever it is, they're getting a facelift or they're getting a nose job or chin implant. And, and, and he looks at it now and says, you know, if we do a lip lift here, the, the teeth are going to be too long or the teeth are going to be too short or the proportions are going to be off. You know, you need to go see Dr. Stanley and then we're going to collaborate together on this case. Mm -hmm. And what's cool is that the collaboration really happens. Like, yeah. You know, we're sending photos back and forth, or I'm in the I'm in the OR when he's doing the surgery. I'm in the room, so it's really, really a cool collaboration. Yeah, it's it's mind blowing, and uh, I want you to talk about the the 3D aspect too, because you were out there. You are actually one of the key opinion leaders for D DSD now. Yeah, and I had a lot of people that were in that course that you were out in New York, and they came back and they said, "Gosh, the game has changed now." As you know, as far as even treatment planning, a lot of it's 3D and motion. Can give us some yeah. perspective because it's very mind blowing when you consider a lot of this, especially, I mean, I've been doing this for 20 years now and it's moving, it seems like it's moving faster and faster. What are you seeing? And can you describe that? Yeah. So, I mean, even since I've been doing DSD for the last maybe four years, okay. um, it's totally changed. Mm -hmm. So when Christian first started, it was all 2d mm -hmm. and it was all very kind of mathematical. And now what we're working on with the DSD team is uh, like Bruno Pereira and Eduardo Mann from Chile. Uh, Bruno's from, uh, from Spain. But we're doing something called facial flow now. So it's not, everything's not mathematical. And Bruno's we're from uh, this pretty soon. And we're, Christian has adopted this as well. We are also now taking it to three dimensions. So we started with 2D. Now with the Nemo DSD software, we can do 3D wax-ups facially driven, export this, print it the same day, 
do a mock-up the same day and the patient can accept the treatment the same day, we can start prepping the same day. All facially guided too. That so you don't great. get those, you know, you don't get those, we've all done this. We play six veneers, eight veneers, we get them back and they're all like this. Mm-hmm. You know, that doesn't happen anymore. That's a thing of the past. And from a practice standpoint, that saves us time, that saves us money, it saves our patients more hassle. They can get back to their family, they can get back to work, less time in the chair. Mm-hmm. Well, what are some considerations? You know, if, if somebody's watching this and they say, look, I'd like to try, like, give us some basic considerations when you're talking to a patient and you're considering the workflow and the lip factor, well, what yeah. should we consider? Yeah. So with, with the lip, what we're looking at is if, if someone has an elongated upper filtrum or they may be missing upper volume in the vermilion border area, you know, the red lip area. This mm-hmm. is what happens when we age. The filtrum gets longer. The vermilion border gets smaller. We show less tooth display at rest. So you can look at that and look at the patient and try to examine if the, is, it, is it their lip that's long? Is it their teeth that's short? And usually with the upper filtrum, the ideal may be around 15 millimeters. So if it's longer than that, if you're if you're 22 millimeters, something like that, usually it's the the upper lip that is lengthened too much. Right. Right. Yeah. So okay, and then um, you know, do you need every bell and whistle to do this? Because I get that question too. You know, I think a lot of young dentists are kind of stuck because they have so much compounding debt. Yeah. With different things, you know, <laughs> that's if I was me gonna... right here. <laughs> right. I went so, to USC, one of the most expensive schools in the world. So. Yeah. So you're right in the middle of that. I mean, did you start from square one and just have all the bells and whistles, or did you start really simple uh, no. in this respect? I mean, that was the great thing about DSD was that all you needed was Keynote or PowerPoint. Right. And so for me, it was easy to adopt it. You know, I watched some lectures, I went to see Christian speak and saw it and I could immediately adopt it, which is great for our generation because we're good with computers. We right. can get software very easily. And now what's cool is that with the DSD virtual lab is you can send things to the virtual lab. They can do a 3D wax up, mock up, send it back to you. And you don't really have to learn the software. I mean, I have the software just because I'm like a nerdy software guy and I want to do it the same day myself and have all the control. Yeah. Very, very cool. And what do you see in the future? You know, as you guys um, go down this path and you're having a chance to speak, you're speaking a lot of different places. What do you see here in the next year or two years with all of the advancements, especially with this concept as the lip factor? What can we expect to see? Well, with our group, so we have a group called uh, the Oral Facial Club. And we've got plastic surgeons, oral surgeons, cosmetic dentists, uh, people that focus on TMJ, everybody together to try to work in a team atmosphere. I think that's where it's going. It's going towards full facial treatment. It's Mm -hmm. going towards incorporating Botox, incorporating fillers, uh, incorporating plastic surgery, and really looking at the patient as a whole instead of just segmenting. Right. Because what happens like with, with the lip factor stuff, Usually what happens is the patient comes in to me and says, okay, I need longer teeth. So I would lengthen the teeth. Then they would go to the dermatologist or the plastic surgeon and say, well, my lip is too small. I want a bigger lip. So normally the plastic surgeon would inject fillers in the upper lip. And then what happens? The lip gets longer. It lengthens more, which covers the teeth that I just did. So it's like this push and pull between the two uh, specialties when now when we can work together, the results are so much better. Yeah, that's it just comes amazing. back to teamwork, you know, not thinking that you can do everything and that working with a team gets you to a better point. Well, with the with technology, too, you actually can work with the team virtually through Skype, just like we are now. Yeah, I mean, it's just yeah, makes exactly. it crazy, easy and full in real time. And all the images are right there. Now, and that's another thing that I think where where dentistry is going to like I'm working on a case right now. Um, with my friend, Matt Kepke, he's in West Virginia. So he's an oral mm-hmm. surgeon in West Virginia. He's working with me and he's working with Sandeep Raul in Florida. So I'm in Canada, Sandeep's in Florida, and Matt Kepke's in West Virginia. We're planning an all-on-four case together with a lip lift, you know, three young guys using software to bring what we can think of as the best together virtually. Yeah. We don't have to be in the same room. Crazy. I'm printing it right there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Now, um, 
Gosh, I have so many questions on this. As far as, um, you know, some of the mistakes that are, you you know, because you shared with me this, you know, it's not easy to figure this out. What are some of the mistakes that you made that you say, hey, look, I've learned from this. Don't do this. Um, be careful when you go down this road of this. I would say when you're doing a full digital workflow is to test things first or the first cases that you're doing, do it digital mm -hmm. and do it analog. Okay. And then compare and see digital might be better in some sense, but in the other sense, it might not be where, you know, what materials, maybe this printing, this printer isn't as good or this resin isn't as good. And I think when you can go side by side through the whole step, through the impression, digital impression, you know, which one's better, which one's faster, what's the best, then through stone or printed model, uh, printed veneers or hand built veneer, all that stuff at every step, if you can compare, then you can start to see, you may not do full digital workflow in your case, if you don't have access to it, like what you were saying, um, or maybe you just don't like the final result. I mean, we have a lot of people that do full digital workflow mm -hmm. and then hand built veneers. Right. Which is great. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I do get this question and, and, and I sh I'm sure you can appreciate this one. You know, the whole digital analog thing, are the younger dentists that are in your generation and young, yeah. are you know, even younger coming out of school, yep. there are a lot of them you see, they're looking to skip over the analog and go straight to digital. And, and there right. all, there's always that warning, you know, the warning of really appreciating the work behind it because, um, and I'll just give you a, a simple little story. You know, my son is diabetic. And so one of the things they always say is, look, you have to learn how to manage this without technology because technology, it does fail. And it's, you have to certainly appreciate the pieces of this. And, and while in dentistry, I think that's kind of the same concept. It's a beautiful, beautiful science and art. Are we missing too much by going over the analog piece straight to digital or not? Yeah, that's a tough question. I don't know yeah. if I have an answer for that. Because this is people ask me all the time. I, I teach a lot about implants. And yeah. I do every implant guided in my practice. Mm -hmm. And people will say, should we teach people coming out of school how to do it freehand first? Right. And I kind of don't think so. I mean, mm -hmm. there's very rare times that I can't use the guide and it's mostly based on access. Right. But I think that teaching them, excuse me, I think that teaching them um, guided from the beginning makes them understand the guide because everyone's going to be doing guided surgery for every case now in the next few years. I've been doing right. it for a few years. I got started a little bit earlier, but I can't imagine doing it without that now. Yeah. So I think getting people started new doing guided surgery is kind of the same thing. If you get started doing the digital workflow, you'll be better at it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, do they really need to know how to pour up a stone model anymore? I don't know. That's, yeah. I don't know if I can go either way on that. Right. Well, I thought I would ask. You. <laughs> well, I I can't speak from either side. You know, I'm just I'm just throwing you the questions because these yeah. are the questions I get because I get amazing questions all the time when it comes to this stuff. But I figure yeah. we'll just ask you because you're right in the middle of it. You know. Um, also, you know, when you're looking at the lip factor, anything else that you would say, you know, just other things that you would say are important to consider when you're treatment planning yes. like this. Yeah. So one thing that was really interesting is I I started looking at this when I was in dental school. So back in 2009 was when I started looking at this, eight years ago. Mm -hmm. And one thing that was hard for me is to get plastic surgeons to call me back. Okay. It took me a few years, years to get plastic surgeons to call me back. Then I found Ben Tele, who's also a young guy. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Very, very highly, highly trained, educated. But he understood that it's not you do this and you do this. So that was one thing is right. get started early, find a plastic surgeon. That is, that's cool that like can understand you and know where you're coming from and realize that together you guys can do better things. But one thing is that the lip lift, the procedure that we're doing, there's a new way to do it. It's called the modified lip lift. And this is something that Dr. Talle came up with. So when I started talking to plastic surgeons, what they would say is, oh, the lip lift, yeah, that's been around for decades. You always get a scar underneath the nose. And then I would talk to Ben and he would say, rarely do we ever get a scar. And so I started re figuring out what is he doing differently? And so you have to find a plastic surgeon that is doing this more often. Most of them do this maybe once, maybe twice a year. And as you know, if, if you don't do something more than a few times a month, you're usually not very good at it. Right. So I was lucky to find Ben who was doing like eight a week. I mean, it was like way more than what I had found other guys doing. 
And so he really went through every step with me, why this works, why this is predictable, why we're not getting a scar. So right. find someone and really get a relationship with this person. And same way with your, your surgical specialist. You know, you really have to have a relationship. They, you should have their phone, you know, on high demand, on your favorites. Hey, I'm sending a patient over. This is what I think. You know, let's talk about this and get everything out in the open before we place the implant, before we do the extraction, yeah. all of that. It's communication. I mean, that's what yeah, it comes absolutely. To. Now, again, I don't know that much about plastic surgery, but wh yep. what? how is a modified lip lift different than what we would consider maybe a traditional lip lift? Yeah. So a traditional lip lift, you take like a mustache shape incision or gall wing excision underneath the nose and then suture the two areas up so that the lip kind of goes up a little bit. Right. And with the modified lip lift, what Dr. Talley is doing is he's releasing all the tissue even more. I mean, it's it's like basic surgical procedures, but for some reason they never did this. Mm -hmm. You know, like in dentistry, if we didn't release a flap, it's not going to close. Right. And it's the same thing with plastic surgery. So Ben is releasing all the way down to the corner of the mouth, you know, maybe halfway down on the filtrum, all the way down the corner of the mouth to really get tension-free closure and then um, and close it up. Another thing that he's doing is these these marks that we teach in our course and these marks, how to mark up, how to line up the two um, incisions so you get a perfect match when they come back up. Wow. And as far as the workflow and the treatment planning process, how long does this take typically? Let's say somebody comes into your office, mm -hmm. you know, and they have a consultation with you. You show them what's possible. Take us yeah. through the steps and how many weeks. What are you, what are you, what are we thinking? Yeah. So a patient comes in, you know, we talk to them, um, see what their, what their goals are, what they want to do. Mm -hmm. We would then usually start with digital smile design. Right. So go through a full digital workflow and figure out in three dimensions where they're going to be, mock up the smile, ignoring the lip. Remember, mm -hmm. just ignoring the lip. Right. Then get the plastic surgeon involved. Um, hopefully, if we can get the patient in temporaries, would be the ideal way. Send them over to the plastic surgeon saying, this is where we're planning on placing the teeth. What do you think? Uh, he may send them back to us and say, we got to change this, you know, whatever. And then once the surgery happens, we have to wait about three months okay. before we can finalize the teeth. So it's pretty similar to, you know, intraorally, like with implants or like with uh, soft tissue grafting, we wait about three months. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Sounds good. And then, um, you know, as far as... Um, could you could you even speak about the financial implications? I mean, because that that might be another thing. I mean, sure. Yeah. When you look at the big picture in what we would consider really aesthetically driven treatment planning, where maybe you're doing full mouth rehabs, as compared Correct. to the approach that you're taking, give us some perspective on that. Yeah, I would say you know, adding in the plastic surgery aspect, you're looking at adding another, let's say, four to six thousand, something like that. Um, if you're just dealing with the lip, that area, and it's a lot of money for sure. Right. But usually, like you said, these are our patients that are doing 10 veneers. They're doing full mouth rehab. They're doing all on four treatment. They're already spending, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. So mm -hmm. when you, when you add on this few thousand dollars that can take their result from, you know, 60% to 85% or to 90%, it really becomes worth it. Yeah. Absolutely. I think the thing that I like the most is the ability to see everything before you get started, because my first thought is, wow, we're going to go after this. And what if the patient doesn't like it? I mean, you can't right. reversing this would be a nightmare. Now, yeah. if you're if you're wanting to see some type of an example, um, Dr. Stanley's website is awesome. Like if you go, you have a couple sections on there where you actually show, uh, not necessarily this particular process, but it's the DSD workflow and how you can treatment plan in 3d before we'd start any particular dentistry. And, um, uh, it's brilliant. So it's a, it's a great way to show patients what's possible well behind, well before. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. That's, so, I mean, I can only give that to Christian. He, uh, he came up with that idea and I was lucky enough to grab onto his coattails. <laughs> it's good stuff. It's good stuff. So, well, if, I'm sure people are going to have questions when it comes yeah. to this kind of stuff, Kyle, like where can we find you and where can we reach out to you? Um, other than your website, is there another way we can reach you? Um, yeah, that's basically, it. you know, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram. My Instagram is Dr. Kyle Stanley, just Dr. Kyle Stanley, you know, find me on Facebook, message me, my website, drkylestanley.com. That's yeah. awesome.
Yeah, and if you're looking for a great new uh, energetic speaker, this guy is hugely, hugely in demand. Um, and uh, you're doing a lot of webinars too for for a lot of different companies. Yeah, um, you know, yeah, I'll be just, giving a, web bar, a webinar for Noble BioCare on Thursday. That's awesome. So I'll be in the same seat with the same thing on. <laughs> awesome. Awesome, buddy. Well, I appreciate this so much. And again, we're going to have you back for a whole bunch of other things. But yeah. if you're watching this, um, get ready because you're going to see more and more from Kyle. So I really appreciate you carving out some time in your busy schedule just to chat sure. with us. So Thanks we for can, having me. Absolutely. So stick around here while we say goodnight to everybody else. But uh, um, again, if you're watching this, you have questions. If you found this valuable, do me a favor, hit the share button and share it with your friends because obviously we'd love for you to share um, this great information information and, and keep giving us suggestions for shows that you want to see, even from Dr. Stanley. I'd love to see what you guys would love to know what you'd love to see. And we'll put that all together and try to do it in a timely fashion. So thank you for watching the best practice show until we see you next time. You guys have a great evening. Thank you so much. See you later, everybody.